folks, uh, we are live once again. Uh, sorry for a little delay. Um, I really need to up upgrade the uh, update the graphic on that because it's saying it's episode one seven four. We've done that for the last three episodes. I really need to have a running repeat. Um, I'm thankful to report uh, for our listening audience this week. Um, I am feeling tons better compared to this time last week, which was about as much fun for people uh, as it sounds. Um, Ugh. Hey, it is what it is, man. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been quite a few things that happened, and we have a result of what became of Mr. Smith's actions as of last Sunday. Oh, dear God. Oh, oh, oh no. Boy. This is from the New York Times, so take what they say uh, with a pinch of salt. Will Smith barred from attending Oscars for 10 years after slap. Smith, who won Best Actor this year, can still be nominated for Oscars, industry officials say, but will be unable to attend the Academy Awards ceremony and other events. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences said on Friday that Will Smith would be barred from attending the Oscars for 10 years because of the harmful behaviour he displayed when he struck the comedian Chris Rock during last month's ceremony. The ban came a week after the actor resigned from the organisation, not that it really does anything, following his violent outburst on the, on the Oscar stage on March 27th. In an open letter released after a morning meeting of the Academy's 54 governors, the group's president, David Rublin, David Rubin, excuse me, and his chief executive, Don Hudson, also called Mr. Smith's behavior unacceptable and admitted to not handling the situation properly during the telecast. For this, we are sorry. This was an opportunity for us to set an example for our guests, viewers, and our Academy family around the world, and we fell short, unprepared for the unprecedented. Mr. Smith said in a statement, I accept and respect the Academy's decision. The Academy declined to elaborate on whether Mr. Smith remains eligible to be nominated for Oscars, but two industry figures with knowledge of its rules, and who were granted anonymity to discuss Academy proceedings so that Mr. Smith is still eligible to win Oscars but cannot attend the Academy Awards ceremony and other events. The altercation between Will Smith and Chris Rock. The instant. The Oscars were derailed when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock and made a joke about Mr. Smith's wife, Jada Pickett Smith, aka abusive wife. Let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. She kinda is. Succubus. Called succubus. Mm-hmm. You can imagine like a psychopath going, whoa, 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 don't, 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 you know, don't associate me with her. <laughs> um, crying out loud, no, crying out loud, no, past behavior. crying out loud, she makes, I don't know, man, past behavior. Yeah, but crying out loud, this makes Stephanie McMahon look like an angel. Ooh, oh, no. Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now I'm imagining Stephanie and an angel outfit. Actually, no, 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 no. no oh, no. God, no, 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 no. no. Why? <laughs> because I'm me. The Academy of, Mar of Motion Picture Arts and Scientists said that Smith will be banned from attending the Oscars for 10 years because of the harmful behavior. A triumph tempered. Mr. Smith owned Serena and Venus Williams' story in King Richard, and he stole their moment at the Oscars. What is alopecia? Miss Should it be Mrs. Smith's, not Ms. Smith's? Because that makes it sound more like it. that's Will's sister. Oh, good. Oh, he's like... No. Depending on how you spell it, Miss can mean both as well. I was not aware. Of that. Yeah. Yeah. If it's M I S S, then it means that they are unmarried. But if it's M S, period, then that can also mean that they're still married. I was not aware of that. Okay. The Academy. Learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> The Academy went on to praise Mr. Rock for maintaining his composure under extraordinary circumstances and thank others involved for their poise and grace during our telecast. Representatives for Mr. Rock did not immediately respond to a request for comment. 
Mr. Smith had to anticipate the possibility that he would not be welcome at future ceremonies in the emotional and polarizing acceptance speech he gave, which Raiden um, came and said, put them crocodile tears away, you know what you did. After mm. winning the Oscar for Best Actor, which he ended by saying, I hope the Academy invites me back, thank you. Uh, a week later, well... <laughs> Barring Mr. Smith from next year's ceremony means that he will not be allowed to present the Oscar for Best Actress. And pending a transition in which the previous year's Best Actor winner bestows the prize for the Best Actress category. The punishment could also spell trouble for the upcoming film Emancipation, a, a $100 million drama for Apple. The movie directed by Antoine Fuqua and starring Mr. Smith as a runaway slave who joins the Union Army is in post-production and has already been touted as a possible award contender. Representatives for Apple did not immediately respond to requests for content for comment. Before Mr. Smith resigned, the organization had been considering expelling or suspending the actor who walked out onto the Oscar stage in the middle of the ceremony and slapped Mr. Rock for making a joke about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, before returning to his seat, where he shouted explicitives that were bleeped out of the live television broadcast. Mr. Smith was allowed to remain in the Dolby Theatre and soon after his outburst, he won the Academy Award for Best Actor and received a standing ovation. I'm just gonna... Just going to... Turn the future funk down ever so slightly because I think it might be coming across a little... There we go, that, that's ample. Um... <clears throat> Conflicting accounts of what happened after the outburst have plagued the Academy, which has been criticised for not immediately removing Mr. Smith from the theatre. The group in its defence said last week that they asked Mr. Smith to leave, but he refused. The telecast producer, Will Packer, later said in an interview on ABC's Good Morning America that although Mr. Smith had been asked to leave the ceremony, Mr. Packer had urged the Academy leadership not to physically remove him from the theatre in the middle of the live broadcast. Mr. Packer said that after he learned there were discussions of plans to physically remove Mr. Smith from the venue, he approached Academy officials and told them that he believed Mr. S Mr. Rock did not want me to make a bad situation worse. But someone close to Mr. Rock, who was granted anonymity to speak while the Academy's inquiry into the incident was underway, said that Mr. Rock was never asked directly if he wanted Mr. Smith removed. The punishment handed down on Friday means that Mr. Smith will not be allowed to attend any of the events hosted by the Academy, including the Governor's Award, which are devoted to honorary Oscars and are not televised, and the annual Academy Luncheon, which celebrates each year's nominees. He will also be barred from screening the Academy, oh, Academy Holds. He would presumably still be able to attend private parties thrown each year by studios or magazines including Vanity Fair if he is invited. The Academy is hopeful that Friday's actions will put to rest this incident, which has played out in the media over the past week and overshadowed the many accolades handed out at the annual telecast. This action we are taking in response to Will Smith's behaviour is a step toward a larger goal of protecting the safety of our performers and guests and restoring trust in the Academy. We can also hope this could begin a time of healing and restoration for all involved and impacted. Okay. I think the... Oh, some of the guys are... Uh, you know, I'm allowing Danny's thing. Sean's in the chat. Hi, Sean. Dan. Happy Palm Sunday. Okay. Yeah, Sean needs, says the music needs to turn it down a bit. Sounds better. Speaking of the Oscars, did you know that they apparently did a musical number during the memoriam segment? What the actual heck? Hmm. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They also didn't include Bob Saget, which, uh, well, how dare you? Mm. Or, um, oh. considering he's a beloved national treasure in the States. Um, mm -hmm. All I got to say, and I'm going to try and keep uh, my summarization as short but to the point as possible because my you know i'm still recovering um i think a ban is probably the right reprimand however i think 10 years is over the top 
if they had said a two-year ban, then I'd say, okay, fair enough. But ten years... Yeah, Will needed to be made an example of for what he did because it was inexcusable, but I feel like 10 years is incredibly harsh. Um, I think what they should say is, okay, we ban you for two to three years, and as a court order, you go and seek uh, professional uh, med you know, mental medical help. Because there's clearly something going on that you need to address, and we and I'm only speaking for myself, and probably a little bit of Raiden. Um, also, look for uh, either marriage counselling or divorce proceedings, because you need to get away from that woman. Mhm. Mm Dan says that's some funky music you're playing there. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Those are my comments. Um, ban is probably the right course of action, but I don't think 10 years is the necessary amount. I would have said two minimum, three at most, but 10 years, I... <sighs> Just to sort of put a, a slight comedic spin. That would, that would be like Lid's banning Oni from going to his favourite pizza or takeout joint for six months over something minuscule. You know, it's just something that's it's a little bit over the top or, you know, I don't know. Imagine saying to Oni you can't go on Twitter and um, and be an idiot for, for three months. What will I do to vent my frustration? You could talk through your pro you could talk through your problems, and you could actually watch Monday Night Raw and try to be calm about it. You're pushing your luck here, lads. <laughs> <laughs> but you know something to that effect. Mm. Okay. Uh, Raiden, what's your take? Do you think the ban is necessary and? Do, you know, do you think 10 years is the right amount, or like me, do you feel like it's going a bit far? Yeah, well, I, mean, I, 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 I kind of didn't want to talk, I, I kind of did not want to talk about this, but you know what? Yeah, let me just, let me just say this. One, yes, we'll definitely deserve the ban, but 10 years is, is too much. I mean, <laughs> him being bad for ten years <laughs> for a slap. Well, the freaking well, Holly was too corrupt to admit their skeletons in their closet when it comes to the Academy Awards. I mean, we all know, we all know the we all know the two men that that got awarded and got the end ovation, and they're right. all pieces of shit. So <laughs> Ro Roman Polanski being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, the, the dude did what he did. And not only was he still accepted back to the Oscars, but also won Best Picture, or what was it, Best Director for The Pianist. Mm. <sighs> and this is after he did what he did. Yeah. But no, no. Will Smith has to be the one to be banned for a decade. Yeah. I mean, listen. I mean, look. That's all, that's all I have to say. And make look what at the, you will look, of that. Yes. Yeah. Just look at the color of Will's skin and then come back to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to make it a race thing, but the way that's just looking. Mm -hmm. Woo, child. That shit is looking dusty. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but yeah, like I said, I do agree with MJ. Ten years is kind of too much. Two years, yeah, I, I could I, I could have dealt with that. But... I don't know. Maybe in in a uh, different different light, he'll learn about about this. You know, but if he's with that woman known as Jada Pickett Smith, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm seeing some things. Him getting filmed by her, her, and he's like, "You, yo, I did not consent for you to be to f film me all this, and just to be made a fool of on your little little, little TV." 
little red table talk of you. Oh, I'm obsessed with sex. I heal. I heal someone to the power of it instead of just talking to someone. Cause the man that the man that Jada Pinkett had an entanglement. Yes, he has mental issues, and the main one is depression. So depression. Oh, mixed Lord. With, oh, oh I, put, no. I put the entanglement mm. on him. How the fuck does that work? Mm. Don't ask me. Listen, <sighs> that, that's just a little thing. A little thing I I, I I stumbled upon, but yeah, I'll let I'll let I'll let I'll let on this. Like I said, mm-hmm. he des- he deserved to get punished, but ten years is definitely not. Def- is definitely not. Def- is definitely too much. But like I said, I hope this helps him out. Saying, okay, I did something wrong because of someone. That has screwed me over for the past couple of years. So I hope that help. I hope that helps him because if he continues be with that woman, like I said last week, it ain't gonna look good for the former freshman to Bel Air. I'll say that right here, right now. Uh, Madam President, your thoughts? I mean. It's it's called facing consequences. You you pay, you're paying. He's paying the piper. But the thing about that is he really doesn't deserve it. Not really. He was just doing what his wife was doing. And here's the thing: she was laughing at the joke before she made a face, and then she sl- he slapped him. Okay, so mm-hmm. and then they're going on reports that saying that she didn't want him to do that. I'm like, don't you fucking lie to me. Don't tell. Don't freaking piss in my cornflakes and call it milk, because that is completely false. You wanted him to do that. You, I'm assuming you wanted to look better in the eyes of the public, but it's like it was a freaking harmless joke. I don't get it. Oh, good lord. I'm just, this is what pisses me off. The fact that, like, um, the fact that Will's even staying with her and the fact that it's 10 years. Here's a thought. How about split the punishment in half? He faces five years. She's banned two for five years. How about that? I like she's, that. The reason, she's the reason that it happened in the first place, so ban her too. Don't just ban him and have him face the consequences. That's not fair. And also, it's like and said, the joke was mid-tier at best. Exactly, it wasn't, even that like... fu- it wasn't even that funny. <laughs> not really. Just... And he didn't even write the joke. Exactly, so... Again, if it, Chris Rocket wrote the joke, it would have been leagues funnier, but that's, that's beside the point. I do not understand why this man stays with this woman and if I really don't want to spread rumors because that's not the case but it's like maybe he will might be in the closet very deep in the closet I don't want to put, put judgments right there but that's just my theory the fact that he would stay married to this woman for so long there has to be a good reason for that he she is keeping something hidden from the public but again that's me spreading rumors and that's not what this is about he didn't deserve that. Maybe five years. Five years would have been the max for me, but ten? It's a little unfair. It just honestly feels unfair to me. So, if if I doubt the academy will care, but it's like just give him five years and then freaking give Jada the other half of five. You don't you don't even want her there anyway? So it's whatever. <clears throat> uh, Sir Stephen. To be honest, I I saw. I saw this coming. It's and pretty much like anything else that is to do with main industries. If ever, if ever there's something that ends up pinning them in a negative light, they immediately dump all, they immediately use that as a scapegoat and then just dump the person all entirely. I mean, need I remind people about what happened with several other controversies, such as the ones in Nickelodeon and mm-hmm. those in the UK, mm-hmm. especially within the BBC. Oh, Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. MJ would know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. but there's several, but there's a lot of things the larger media corporations do to hide their dark secret. Yep. And immediately afterwards, um, when they're brought to light, they just hope that the public tries to forget them. Uh, it's why um, 
you know, people were so heartbroken when uh, it was revealed what Rolf Harris was, you know, was what he is now, and I, I can't say it um, on Twitch, yeah. he was a beloved national treasure in both Australia and the United Kingdom, and yeah, and I know that um, yeah. I know that broke Random's heart because he was a big Rolf Harris fan growing up, and then once he heard the confirmation of what Rolf was, every little like uh, meme. Art, whether it was sprite-based art, GIFs, or videos, he either took it down from DeviantArt or took it down from his YouTube channel because you don't want to be seen to be endorsing someone that heinous. And that's, yeah. the, that's the length of what I'm able to describe because of the way uh, the rules are. Now, um, more so with YouTube, but I would imagine the same rules apply with Twitch, where you're not able to uh, go into specific details of what people are. That's why, uh, particularly on YouTube, you'll hear the term drapist instead of the actual Other term. word. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a way of skipping through it. But at the same time, it's like it's just it's just the rules they have to adhere to. Mm. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, did you have anything else to add, Steve? No, that I think that was pretty much it. Okay. Uh, Kaiju, I think you said earlier that because you added a, a little piece, I think you said that's all I have to say about this. Yep, pretty much. Don't really have much to add to the conversation other than, yeah, it's a pretty severe, um, it's a pretty severe punishment given what he's done, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense in comparison to what other people have done, mm. but have still been invited back year after year after year. Heck, I'm sure there's plenty more scumbags in Hollywood that we haven't heard about yet, mm -hmm. who we know for sure are going to be invited next year that everyone knows but won't say anything about it. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> I, I don't know what oh, you're talking that's about. Like I, 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 that, that was just like what, 20 years ago. I don't know why everybody you know what has you're a problem. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't control myself. <laughs> I'm just a bit of circumstances. <laughs> This is, this is good. I, I, yeah, I have no idea what's appropriate or inappropriate to say on Twitch. So it's like, if you know, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, also, how to piss Raiden off in three, two, one. Oh. What? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, what's going on? I'm in I'm in, I'm in bed, so let's, let me say. Fast 10 adds Captain Marvel's Brie Larson. Dungeon Dumber! <laughs> Please tell me that's a villain! Please, that's a villain! Oh, Please. God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you know what? Fa Whoa, I know what fast fashion guy ain't watching. <laughs> please be a villain. Please be a villain. Please be a villain. Also, before 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 you say anything, before you say anything, I did check check the glimpse of the last fast movie. Half is bombastic, but I did like the I did like the whole relationship reunion between Dom and his strange brother. So that that mm -hmm, that was yeah. nice. This. Oh boy. And a nice call back to the very first movie when Dom handed the keys to uh, to Jacob. Yeah. Because um, it was a call back to what happened between Brian and Dom in the first movie where he handed the keys to his uh, Toyota Supra and he said, I owe you a 10 second car. 
and you know, just paying homage to that. And at the end of Fast Nine, uh, one of Brian's cars pulls up. So the character was in the movie, but just obviously not with Paul Walker's likeness on there. So right. Mm -hmm. Brie Larson is joining another massive franchise. Late Saturday night, Fast and Furious mainstay Vin Diesel announced his Marvel Cinematic Universe co-star will join the Fast franchise with the upcoming Fast 10. Should also point out that's Fast 10 Part 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In space! No, we already did that. Uh, they, they already went to space, Lydia. Yeah, and then we're going again with Markiplier. <laughs> <laughs> you see this? No, no, they're going to an, they're, they got to go to another another dimension now. <laughs> Into galactic planetary. <laughs> where, where are we Great, going? now we're gonna give them mechs too. <laughs> we go we go into a different. Oh ultimate. god, there's a there's already a meme for that. We oh go, god, we go into a different alternate universe where. Uh, Roman Pierce is played by Chris Tucker. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, no. Darkest timeline. Darkest uh, timeline. And where... I don't know. Brian is played by either Chris Pratt or Tom Cruise. Liz is like, I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, yeah... You see this angel over my shoulder, cracking me up. You say to yourself, that's Captain Marvel. Diesel shared on Instagram alongside a selfie the two took. Clearly there is love and laughter in this image. What you don't see, however, is the character you will be introduced in into Fast 10. You have no idea how timeless and amazing she will be in our mythology. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> Beyond her beauty, her intellect, her Oscar, ha ha ha, is this profound soul who will add something you might not have expected but yearn for. Welcome to the family, Brie. Uh, I wasn't yearning for a no, shit. No, 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 no. You, 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 you can't say it. You can't say it. You gotta read it like this. Welcome to the family, Brie. <laughs> okay, I can't, I can't tell if you're trying to be Vin Diesel or Sylvester Stallone. I don't got superheroes. I got family. <laughs> See, when I imagine somebody coming over into the Fast family that I could embrace, I'd imagine Cameron Diaz, maybe Kim mm -hmm. Basinger, possibly mm -hmm. Katie Holmes, or or heck, um, Coco Jones from uh, from Bel Air. How you doing, by the way? Or, <laughs> or Tika Sumter. Hey, honey, how you doing? Hey, you know, I, said, I, I heard when I was out with a work colleague after we after she finished her shift, I heard somebody say that, and I immediately thought of you, MJ. Because <laughs> uh, you look at Tika and you're like, damn, girl, I need to get your number. Yeah. Uh, heck, even... Um, uh, the one with the <laughs> spiky head, slightly spiky hair on Double Toasted, you know, he, after he sees Sonic 2, he's just like, oh, damn, girl, you look fine. <laughs> just like, yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, oh. Interestingly enough, Larson herself started campaigning to join the Fast franchise in press stops earlier this year. Please, please tell everybody of, I would, of course, want to be in a Fast and Furious movie. I'm obsessed. I love them. I think they're so good. They're so fun. All I'm going to say, Brie, is stay away from a Trans Am and stay away from a Mustang and we're good people. Oh, don't ever get into a Dodge Challenger or a Dodge Viper. Otherwise, Raider will be coming at you after you with harpoons. It's like, get, it's like stay oh, out of my car, bitch. Unless she's being run over by said vehicles, like Mr. Bill, <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> That's where Liz will go to Odie. Honey, can I borrow your monster truck? Why? What are you going to do? I'm going to run it. Oh, I'm going to uh, run over Brie Larson's character. Oh, here, here. Here's, here's for the next six months. Just, just make sure you pay me back in pizzas. <laughs> um, the Captain Marvel told Up Rocks, and they made me appreciate cars. I'm down to play new characters and whatever. Whatever it takes. But I'm very down for a crossover moment. I think... 
crossover mode. No, 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 no. We do not want Captain Marvel uh, in the Fast franchise. No, 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 no. I think you've tapped into something that is a true love of mine, so I would be down. It was in that same interview that Marvel, st the Marvel star, said a crossover between the Avengers and the Fast and Furious franchise would be a gazillion dollar idea. Please no. Please no. <laughs> I, I can entertain the idea of Fast and Furious crossing over with Knight Rider, because at this point the Fast and Furious franchise has jumped the shark more times than Knight Rider did in in, the, in its fourth season, but. Knight Rider would be a little bit more grounded, per se. But the idea of the Avengers crossing over with Fast franchise? Yeah, I don't know. Besides, you know Tony Stark would come in and just modify the shit out of all those cars. <laughs> um, the ensemble for the Universal flick is quickly growing. In addition to Diesel and Larson, Jason Momoa is joining the next one. Okay! I'm okay with that. That I'm okay with. Natalie <laughs> Emmanuel, cool. Michelle Rodriguez, Daniela Melchior, Tyrese Gibson, Sun Kang. Hey, Black Hatcher 2! Um, Sun Kang, glad Han is back. Very underrated. Yeah. And Ludacris are all tapped to appear in the feature. Are you excited to see Brie Larson joining? What do you think? Oh, Lord. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> What do you think about of his new comments about the film? Uh, writer of this article, it should be her comments, not his. Like, someone's going to get pissed off uh, at that. Um, what do I think about Brie Larson joining Fast 10? Hell no, hell no, fuck you. Bye, bye, boom. <laughs> um, I, I acknowledge... That she's at least a competent actress, but it's because that she brings controversy onto the set. And you've seen in press junket interviews when she's with her co-stars from Avengers Endgame, none of them want to be around her, including when you see Don Cheadle like, hey, hey, don't touch me. Or to where you look at Jeremy Renner when he's being interviewed with her, he looks so uncomfortable to be around her and of course uh not too many people uh speak highly of her because of those comments she made um at an awards ceremony regarding a wrinkle in time which i can't really go saying exactly what she said because it's kind of racially charged in that sense and she goes and says it, you know, it wasn't made for this person, but, you know, Raiden comes back and said, um, I've seen that movie, I thought it was trash. You know, something, or something to that effect. So people, you know, the, the movie that Wrinkle in Time was made for, they didn't care for it any, anyways. They're like, we don't Nah, they did this. not. So, I think Universal are only bringing in Brie in because she's a name of the moment. And the problem is, though, she courts controversy. Brie courts controversy by opening her mouth like Hulk Hogan putting out a controversial tweet, which you lose track of how many times that happened. And somebody said recently, someone should get a social media manager for Hogan's Twitter so that they have to look at what he's about to post and then say, ah, ah, because we said, because Wynn said this five years ago on this exact show, Hogan needs, like, a personal manager, because one of these days, he's going to say something he will regret. That was more Oni, but as far as Oni's concerned, Hogan is always putting out something that, you know, he will later regret down the line. I mean, what about Pasta Mania? <laughs> oh god uh, Raiden thoughts on the fact that uh, Ms. Larson is going to be in Fast 10 <clears throat> uh -oh. hell no now 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 <laughs> listen 
Okay. I was going to write this film off, but when I heard Jason Momoa and Daniela Melchior was in there, I mean, I mean, I loved her since freaking the Suicide Squad as Ratchet and She was just... Aside from King Shark, she was the heart of the film, so... A part of me might check it out. The Brie Larson scenes, I'm just gonna... I, 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 I'm just gonna ignore them. But, that said, part one... Oh, okay, look. Honestly, I made peace on how bombastic the Fast franchise has been, so... Whatever, I'll check it out. It it, uh, it is what it it is what it is. Free, I just find her non-existent. So there you go, Madam President. <laughs> uh oh. Ah <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no, fuck no. Yeah, I nobody wants this. I don't want this. And the only way I will see this fucking movie is, guess what? It's if she gets treated the same way Markiplier did in Markiplier in, in space with Markiplier. Because she, she I want to see her get Sparta kicked into a cryo chamber. Hmm. Anybody see that? I'm spo- spoiling and I apologize, but it's like, no, I don't want this. I don't want this. Uh, the only way, again, the uh, the only other way I'll accept this is that if she fl- is flying in as Captain Marvel and she gets sucked into the engine block. That's the only way no. I'll accept this. Nobody wants no this. Kips. Yeah, no kips. Nobody wants you. Bree, and you're saying you want to branch out into different characters? Bitch, you play the same fucking character in every movie you've been in. Sit down, grab a Kit Kat, go to sleep. No one likes you. You go talking about cryo chambers. Can we go put her in the cryo chamber that in Demolition Man and seal her up for 36 years so no one has to hear from her? I would be okay with that. <laughs> Isn't it weird how that movie predicted half of the chaos that would actually happen in this day and age where people get reprimanded for saying things out of tone i mean can you imagine what you like for uh, half the people on facebook and twitter if they get like uh you know like what uh some things got you're fine one credit for the verbal morality stature what fuck you <laughs> oh jesus because um i probably shouldn't be saying this but you imagine what it'd be like if that if that happened if Ashley was in Demolition Man and she just starts saying exactly how she feels, you'd be like, Oh girl, I already know how this is gonna win for you. <laughs> yeah, she we, we 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 both know how unfiltered she is. Ah, uh, but you know, she shoots from the hip and tells it like it is, and I applaud her for that. Mm-hmm. That's you know, that's why to you she's the goddess. Yep. Uh, Stephen, thoughts on Bree being in Fast Ten? I just, yeah, not really a fan of the uh, Fast and Furious franchise. Anyway, the only thing that I've seen that she was reasonable in was Kong Skull Island. Although for that part, I was just mostly in it for the John Ape and monster fight. And even the mm-hmm. ape probably got tired of her. Mm. Can you imagine it, it's like, oof, I, I simply couldn't put up with her, with her, with her buffoonery. Oh, the absolute bane of her ruining my scene as I'd already gone stood sixty feet above her. That, no, that's yeah. the only time that. So it's probably the only time you're going to see um, Captain Marvel and Loki team up. <sighs> I can already imagine Kong, Kong being being an English actor. I will not sanction this buffoonery. <laughs> Although, who was the mo? Was there a mocap actor for Kong in that movie? For who? His tummy was Andy Serkis. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, he's uh, not I was him. about to say uh, Kong Skyler. Oh, it, it was one of oh, the right, uh, right, yeah. one of the act one of the actors who played the soldier. Although I think he might have done um, uh, was it mocap or just the face? Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, oh wait, do, do you remember? Do you remember the guy 
who like who the the soldier who got separated from the group and witnessed Kong yeah. fighting the giant squid. Mm-hmm. 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 That's so. the guy who played Kong. Oh wow. shit! That's weird Inception right there. <laughs> Kongception, you mean? <laughs> ah. ah. Quite a like... conspiracy on our hands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they they actually had a um, a Kong animated series out back in the day where this is going to sound like something out of the asylum where <sighs> Kong actually has a human brother that were cloned directly from the original King Kong. I think and... I remember that show. Yeah, yeah that's the uh, animated about, series. Where, where Kong... I think so. Yeah, it was an animated series where Kong was blue. Yes, mm-hmm. that's the one. And it's one where <laughs> the human brother was actually able to merge with him and actually able to essentially... Oh, God, and... Pilot call. Oh god, I dude, if you were bringing taking me back to this shit. Yeah, strangely enough, they brought that version of Kong back twice in two direct to video movies, both of them being musicals for whatever reason. Uh, what was it? Kong King of Atlantis and Kong Return to the Jungle. Hmm. Both are both are absolute crap. Don't ever watch them. Noted. Not gonna lie, that Kong animated series remind reminds me of what Symbiotic Sign was. Where all three of the all three of the all three of those people merge to create a giant robot. Huh. Okay. Alrighty. Uh last but uh never least, Kaiju, what do you make of the idea of Brie Larson being added to the last two installments uh, of the Fast franchise? I have no strong feelings one way or the other because I am not that big of a fan of Fast and the Furious to begin with. I've only watched a handful of films, and the last one I watched was all the way back with uh, Fast 7. So, uh, (laughs) yeah. So I I haven't kept up with the franchise at all. I just keep up with the memes. And I have a very... Uh, I, I, again, like much, and with Brie Larson, it's the same. I do not hate her. I do not particularly like her. I thought she was decent in Kong Skull Island. Um, she was there in, in Captain Marvel. And she was barely there in Endgame for me, for me to, to, for her to leave any sort of real lasting impression on me. So again, I don't hate her like everyone else does. But I am certainly not going to go up to bat for her. Fair enough. Plus, the series went to space. Where where the fuck do you go from there at that point? Yeah. Back in time. Yeah, that's true. Ba, ba, Fighting ba, zombies. Ba, <laughs> Sam Raimi Spider Man Four trends as fans campaign on Twitter. Hashtag. Make Raimi Spider-Man 4 is trending on Twitter today as a group of fans have generated more than 16,000 tweets in support of a follow-up to the filmmaker's original Spider trilogy. The movement to get a third Amazing Spider-Man, or a fourth Raimi Spider-Man, has only gotten bigger in the months since the release of Spider-Man No Way Home, in which the Marvel multiverse opened up and both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield appeared on screen alongside Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Garfield said he would return again under the right circumstances, and there have been plenty of fans advocating for him to get another spot, to which he has allegedly signed uh, a deal for three Marvel projects as his incarnation of Spider-Man. So there may be an amazing Spider-Man 3 amongst that. Who knows? Hope. Mm-hmm. The Raimi involvement is a little less than surprising than the amazing one. After all, Raimi had planned for a fourth Spider-Man film, the particulars of which leaked out in drips over the years. In the 15 years since Raimi's last installment, the movie we don't like to talk about, (coughs) the original (laughs) Spider-Man trilogy has continued to be loved by by fans, at least two out of three of its movies. Originally announced in 2009, Spider-Man 4 would have been released in 2011. If the movie had been made, 
Instead, Raimi and the studio parted ways, with Mark Webb coming in to reboot the franchise with The Amazing Spider-Man in 2012. It really was the most amicable and undramatic of breakups. It was simply that we had a deadline and I couldn't get the story to work on the level that I wanted it to work. I was very unhappy with Spider-Man 3. We all were. And I wanted it to make Spider-Man 4 to end on a very high note. The best Spider-Man of them all. Raimi told Vulture in 2013, but I couldn't get the script together in time due to my own failings and I said to Sony, I don't want to make a movie that is less than great, so I think we shouldn't make this picture. Go ahead with your reboot, which you've been planning anyway. Amy Pascal said, Thank you. Thank you for not wasting the studio's money and I appreciate your candor. So we left on the best of terms, both of us trying to do the best thing for fans. The good name of Spider-Man and Sony Studios. Of course, now Raimi is back with Marvel, directing the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, while Spider-Man's multiverse has opened up and given Maguire another shot at the role. Would you like to see Raimi and Tobey Maguire return to the world of Spider-Man? And it should also be noted, Raimi has actually said, I will do a Spider-Man 4 if Toby wants to do it as well. And on the, on the one hand, some could make the argument that Spider-Man No Way Home was unofficially Garfield's third movie and unofficially Maguire's fourth movie, but, you know, these things are usually best done whilst the iron's hot. And yes. considering that love and enthusiasm is still with there, still there with the fans, and as we've seen in recent years, particularly with Sonic the Hedgehog, studios are giving the fans more and more of what they want. Now, in Sonic the Hedgehog, you could argue, is a particularly um, special case because of the way the original design, what the character was, and looking at it realistically, if they had gone with that design, it's probably more than likely the movie would have either performed less than how they wanted, or it just would have been a straight up disappointment. So, because they put out a Sonic design where, you know, people were met halfway, the studio had a plausible somewhat realistic looking Sonic but at the same time he resembled a design that was much closer to how to what fans wanted but at the same time it just looked more realistic so knowing that Andrew has like, has, like I said he's spoken with Sony and they want him back he wants to come back because his story was never really given full closure after Amazing Ooh. 2 because I think Amazing 3 would have tied everything up. Plus we would have had Shailene Woodley as that universe's version of Mary Jane Watson. And from what I've seen of Cheyenne, she's actually a good actress. Um, they have asked her would she come back for Amazing 3 and she said look so much time has passed since then she wouldn't come back to it now um, I'm all for the possibility of a Spider-Man 4 being done because at this stage let's say for argument's sake that gets a 2024 release because it's not just um you know, figuring out the story. You've got to get the idea of how long you want this movie to be, what technical uh, challenges, special effects, what visuals are going to be in, how much it's going to cost. Um, because Raimi said it himself. He won't put out a movie unless he feels it's the absolute best on his part and actually making the character of Spider-Man looking looking good because he sees Spider-Man in a very specific way which was how we got the original trilogy I mean the way he has Spider-Man represented um, it's not quite the quirky 
mouthy version that we're so accustomed to, whether it be from comic books or the iconic animated series from the 90s. Yeah, he, he cracked a few jokes here and there, but his Spider-Man was more from the perspective of kind of a noble, you know, a noble, awkward kid who has to put responsibility before his own personal needs. I think one of my buddies compared Raimi's version of Spider-Man to being like Christopher Reeve's version of Superman. You know, it's just this very... Uh, altruistic and you know very considerate version um so to s visit peter parker where he would be say 17 years removed so at this stage if parker was like 19 or 21 in spider-man 3 so he's got to be at least mid 30s by the time we see him in Spider-Man 4, and we saw from No Way Home, Toby was in amazing shape, considering it had been, mm -hmm. you know, 16, you know, some 14 years since he last put on the suit, and the suit still looked great. Uh, although I did hear that apparently they actually have to put plastic bags over their feet before slipping into the boots, so that when they actually take the, the boots off later. They're a little bit pruny. Make of that what you are. I know they. I know where Christian Bale said it, something in a similar uh, press interview when he was playing uh, Batman in the, in the Dark Knight because he, he'd lose a ton of weight wearing that suit because, you know, it's heavy latex and, you know, it does get very warm and uncomfortable in that suit. Whereas... Spidey's suit is a lot lighter. It's, it's not comfortable for them to wear after a set amount of time because it's not like some other. It's not like the homemade costume he had in Homecoming, where it's essentially just a pair of sweatpants and a and a hoodie. They actually have to be sewn into these suits. And I noticed I noticed with. Um, the differences with the masks. In the first movie, you don't ever see the chin uh, moving whenever Spidey's talking, yet you get to No Way no Way Home's Tom Holland, and you do see the chin actually moving up and down when the character's speaking, so it is a little less jarring when you think about that, but um, yeah, um, I'm all for it. I know random will be particularly for it because he was elated as most people were when quote King Toby uh, showed up on stage because apparently in some of the audience reactions Toby actually had a bigger pop from the audience for returning than, than Garfield did <laughs> but to be fair to be fair and you know people have been very candid about this Garfield was not the problem with his two movies, it was just the scripts that let him down. More so Amazing 2 than the first Amazing, but... That's what happens when studios interfere too much. That they do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's not to say that Spider-Man 3 didn't have its share of problems, because, oh, good lord. I'm going to cringe at that moment next month when I review the trilogy. Because I'll get to <laughs> I'll get to that one moment and be like, oh no, oh, like, this is utter. <laughs> and, and and Kaiju said something years ago. It's not that cringy, say, from the perspective of that version of Peter Parker, because the symbiote is allowing him to act out what he thinks is cool, what he thinks makes him, you know, march, hip, and, you know, just presentable, whereas everyone else is looking around going, boy, what have you been smoking? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, Madam President, would you want to see a fourth 
in the Sam Raimi um, series. And do you think maybe, do you think maybe, you know, too much time has passed? I mean, what do you think? I think it could work. I mean, depend. it, it depends on the script and what you do with it. I honestly could, I'm all, all 100% um I'm on board with that, and I can attest to the whole uh, re- audience reaction. Because don't get me wrong, I, I I was hyped up when I heard when I saw Garfield on the screen, but I also hyped up too when Toby appeared to the point where some dude behind me would went Toby. I'm like, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, uh, all in all, I would love to see that again. I would like to see Raimi work a little bit more with uh, Marvel Studios. Heck, maybe uh, get to do uh, Ash versus Marvel Zombies just. Hit, hit, wink, wink, just come on. If anybody can do that kind of story and do how dark and outlandish that is, Sam Raimi. Well, he was the king of the uh, the horror scene um, back in the day. That's how he, you know, essentially launched Bruce Campbell's career. Ah, and also just put Bruce Campbell in. I don't care if he's like a little bit more distinguished. Just put him in the movie. It's fine. I'll be okay with that. Just. <laughs> But again, I, I would like to like to see um, Spider-Man Four again, or and or g- get another version of the Amazing Spider-Man Three. Just, just Sony, keep your hands away from the cookie jar, please. Get out, go, go over there. Just don't interfere, and we'll be fine. Yeah, because see, Sony. Um, just to elaborate, what Madam President has just said, this is how we get Ghostbusters 2016 situations. No, this is how we get. No, this no, is no, how we no, get no, Morbius. No. <laughs> uh, well, all in all, I would definitely love to see uh, Spider-Man Four. Just, uh, I'd be down for that. Just again, have a good script, and we'll see what happens. Uh, to our own version of Blade, would you want to see a Spider-Man Four after all these years? Uh, honestly, probably, probably, I don't know, I don't know, I'm kind of, I kind of agree with the sentiments that Kaiju said last week, I'm kind of, in a sense, I'm kind of burnt out on the superhero movies, unless the ones that I really want to see, like, for example, this month, uh, October, I believe, Sp- Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 is coming out, so you know for a fact I'll check yeah. that out, since I love that movie mm-hmm. so much, you know, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. Uh, Sam, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man series, excluding three, definitely I would be interested. You know, because mm. I love Spider-Man will never die. That's that's a, that's something that that will ca- that'll carry on. So, hey man, right script, right people. Hey, I, I'd be I'd, I'd be down down for that. You know, like that'd be cool. This is kind of trivial. But let's just say that we get this, you know, put in writing, it's concrete and all. As much as we narc um, on this composer, Spider-Man 4 must open as the previous three. It has to open with Danny Elfman's theme. It cannot open the other way. Yeah. Because for so many years... That was, you know, how you recognized, you know, you were going to watch a Spider-Man movie, including, you know, um, the computer animated opening credits, because it has to open up with that. Otherwise, it's not Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. And yeah, I'd probably at some stage have Bruce Campbell show up again. I mean, he's been... A wrestling promoter. He's been an usher. He's been a waiter. Lord knows what he's gonna cameo as for a fourth movie. He he was yeah, probably was, 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 was Mysterio. He was, going, he was going. He was going to be Mysterio in the fourth movie. Oh. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Let me let me find that storyboard. Okay. I saw that storyboard and it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't hear the Vulture was going to be the main villain. He was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I heard. Or the Voltress. Oh, yes. Uh, 
Yeah. Because yeah. they really wanted to fit in some version of Felicia Hardy in there. Here's a thought. How about we just do Black Cat instead? Instead of doing whatever no, no, the hell that was. I, I, I guess. No, no. You see, he, the studio wanted Black Cat, but Sam Raimi wanted to do the Vulture. And then the studio said, oh, why don't we just combine the two? That way we both get what we want. Uh, no. Can you see why Sam Raimi thought, yeah, no, this is not going to work anymore? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm out. Fuck this shit, <laughs> Fuck this shit I'm out. Uh, come on, Bruce, let's go. <laughs> I just find it funny. I find it funny about it because I remember Channel Awesome did their fan scripture series. And uh, Walter Benet, they did, yeah, they did their version of, Sp of Spider-Man Four. It was it looked pretty cool on paper. And obviously, because it's you know the Sam Raimi series as well, we must and will have J.K. back as J.J. and give him his hairpiece back. Dang it! <laughs> that just looks so weird in No Way Home with J.J. without his. Signature flat top. You, you know why they did that, right? To make him look like because they Jones wanted to make fun there. of a certain thing. No, to, to make him legally distinct enough from the Sony version. Oh, oh that, that makes that's sense. That's why that, that's oh. why everything is so different in in the MCU Spidey version. They want to make a a version of their of their Spider Man that's distinct enough from from Sony in a way that they cannot copy it if and or when they ever get the rights movie rights back from them so they cannot have him uh, a peter parker who's a spider who's uh who is spider iron man sidekick or they can't have a version of spider-man uh with the black stripes on his outfit or he can't have a version with an iron spider suit they can't have a version with a uh brown m and mj or ned or what was it? Or uh, what, what's her name? Black Liz Allen, who happens to have Batman as her dad, or <laughs> be, be in the Avengers and you know talking to to Sam Jackson. Everything that they've done is specifically to make it their own version of Spider-Man that's unique from everyone else, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. This includes bald <laughs> bald JJ. And Flash Thompson, who kind of looks like freaking, looks like some dude who's like would be an incel. I'm sorry if that's yeah. I'm not supposed to yeah, say there, that. There, just there, like there's another there's another one. Yeah, I kind of like saying. that version of Flash from um the amazing the amazing Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. He, he I mean, I do remember the comics in, in in later years. Peter and Flash are really good friends, so I would I wouldn't mind to see a like. See, see that friendship play play out. I know. Also, I'm selfish. I would love to see if they, if they're gonna bring 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 Flash from a different dimension as Agent Venom because I like what they did with that. Did with yeah, Indiana, same. Was Eddie Brock. Um, you ever notice between the first Spider Man and then the first Amazing? Um, they really scaled Flash down in terms of muscle builder because Joe Mangello was just jacked. I, I still can't believe I still can't believe that was him in that movie. Holy crap. Yeah, I'm like, whoa. Yeah, and then the kid who they got as Flash in the second one, I mean in the in the reboot, okay, he he still has an intimidating presence about him, but uh, he um he comes more off as not like some like jock who picks on the nerd. This is a dude chasing clout. That's what that is. Yeah. Some dude on the internet chasing clout. That's what that is. That's what he is. Mm. <clears throat> um. So Stephen, would you want to see a Spider-Man four? Oh, definitely. And. I may be thinking forward thinking about this in terms of what I could see might work, but considering the amount of time that has passed in Spider-Man 3, I know we might not like to acknowledge that movie, but considering how much time has passed, I think one plot point, which I think Wynn might agree with, 
I'm, I can't say on her behalf, but just thinking out there, one one idea I'd like to see the introduction of Mayday Parker. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That would be yeah. intriguing. Yeah. Con- considering they um, in No Way Home, they said that they eventually made it work. So why not we explore that idea further? Maybe introduce Mayday Parker in there. Or maybe she would be in the Cross the Spider Verse. I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. See, her being introduced in live action form, um, that would be um, particularly good for the fans, considering it was that storyline we don't like to talk about, where it effectively erased Mayday Parker. Oh. Yes. Because, well, I think it was, not sure if it was um, Quesada or Dan Slot. It, it, it was, they just said yeah, it was Quesada. I think it was, I think it was, I think it was Quesada. Yeah, he said Quesada. Quesada. He was said of Marvel. <laughs> yeah, he said Spider-Man is not supposed to be a happy family, man, because happy families in comics are boring. And I'm like... I would disagree. Uh, Excuse me? Because that would then um, put greater pressure on his shoulders because of the fact he's having to protect his family. Also, the Fantastic Four would like to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the Bat Family. Mm-hmm. Oh, say. God. Oh, dear God, yes. But then again, you know, this is. This, this or, is the Gra- or the Grayson family from Invincible. Yeah, mm-hmm. But then again, this is the same man that said, and I quote, you're either a Marvel or a DC, you can't be both. And I say, no, you can. You can be both, because there's good to be found on, on either side, and by extension, there's also bad to be found on either side. But that's a long list that no one's going to get to the end of uh, anytime soon. Although, I find... Marvel tend to produce more bad movies than DC, but not by much. We just try to forget two in particular, Daredevil and Elektra. Yeah. Uh, I will admit Daredevil had, a, Daredevil had a dope soundtrack, but that was it. Yeah. And thinking, Col- thinking I mean, of- what's her... No, it's cool. If it wasn't for that movie, I wouldn't be into Evanescence. Yes. Hmm. It's true. Yeah. No, it was Just also... thinking about the Sam Raimi movies, um, each each one you go look at, it like it goes to uh, Peter goes through a particular struggle in that in each movie. One where the first one is more or less his coming of age into adulthood. Second one, he's trying to be more independent. And and the third, it's more or less trying to deal with his relationship with MJ. So, for me, the next logical step would be for him to tackle the challenges of parenthood. Yep. And you know, you know, having to explain to Mayday uh, what she's going through when she learn she can stick to walls and she can shoot webbing from from a risk lands be like dad what the mm-hmm. hell is going on with me and then he just crawls up onto the ceiling and she's like oh hell no <laughs> um, mind you they did kind of um address that partially in one comic book where you actually see Mary Jane uh, webbing across New York with Peter, and she go and they. This is the one where, the, the, you know, like I said a few episodes ago, there's some jokes where you have to read between the lines a little bit, and it goes, uh, "You got my powers by because you because you borrowed my toothbrush." Yes, yes, I borrowed your toothbrush. It's like they had sex. Yes, that's totally what happened. <laughs> so, 
whether, you know, as and when we get the fourth movie and we see uh, Mayday inheriting Peter's gifts um, and possibly Mary Jane as well because there's been various fan arts over the years of of uh, Kirsten putting on a Spider-Man costume so this will cross off uh, a checklist on someone's bucket list so mm-hmm. who knows and to our own um, to our own superhero uh, Mr. Draco Azul um <laughs> Mm. What do you think about the possibility of a Spider-Man 4? Do you think maybe too much time has passed since Spider-Man 3? Uh, yeah, like, personally, I don't want a Spider-Man 4 to happen for, mul- for multiple reasons. One is that I am sick to death of nostalgia pandering. Um, I think, like, we had enough, like, what we got in uh, Spider-Man No Way Home was fine enough as it was but too much so can get real uh, you know i've already gotten really burned out after all every single franchise constantly reminding me of shit we've already seen 20 30 years ago and i just want to see something new again much like into the spider-verse um next it's been way too long since like we've had sam raimi direct those uh those uh films of his and on top of that it's been 10 years since his last almost 10 years since his last film uh what was it uh oz the great and powerful and (laughs) who knows really how dr strange in the multiverse of madness turns out because i'm not saying that he's a bad director far from it he's a he's a fantastic director dark man is one of my favorite movies ever and but unfortunately, I don't know if he still has what it takes. And on top of that, I'm not sure, you know, not only do I am I not sure if he has still has what it takes as a director after taking such a long break from Hollywood, but also Hollywood has changed immensely um, in the days since Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. I mean, back then he was already struggling to have creative control over his projects. Nowadays, you can't like... You, you can't really make a large budget movie without having the studios breathe breathing down your neck every single time. <laughs> Just look at the MCU. Can you really tell right. that they were all directed by multiple directors with unique visions? No, because all these superhero movies are all usually done by one unified, boring, milk toast vision mm-hmm. that where directors are not allowed to fully be themselves, to fully get into their creative spirits. When when it comes to it comes to Sam Raimi, he's got one of the most unique styles out there in in the in the industry prior to his uh, hiatus from Hollywood. And looking at Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, I'm sorry, but it does not look like a Sam Raimi movie. It just looked like they got his name, they they hired him for name recognition alone, and, and but like have none of none of what makes his movie special really at least from a visual standpoint so if he ever does get to do another spider-man movie i doubt it's going to have any of that unique charm that he had he played he he fought to include in those original three uh in that original trilogy second of all if we ever do return to that toby Maguire sam Raimi timeline I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure like i'm sorry but like I, as much as I enjoyed No Way Home, <laughs> I think No Way Home royally fucked both the Andrew Garfield and the, especially the Tobey Maguire timelines because, spoiler mm-hmm. alert, they they made the, all the villains be given the chance to live. And unfortunately, I, I'm sorry, but I hated that part of the movie because not only do you contradict the timelines by having everyone live, you're thinking, okay, so what exactly happened in this t- new version of the time retcon timeline where nor where norman osborne didn't die where otto octavius didn't die where uh sandman what was cured uh of of, of, his, of his condition <coughs> what happens to peter parker what happens to M- uh, mary jane what happens to fuck what happened to to harry osborne um and also, I, the thing is, I hate that about bringing about letting these characters live. Is that sure? 
for for cheap fan service having these characters given a second chance of, of, of getting a chance of redemption is fine and all but when you think about it the fact that these characters died meant a lot to toby mcguire's spider-man in terms of his character arc in terms of his journey as a hero as a hero um these characters deaths m were important to his growth essential to his growth as a character so having them live now again you rob the character of of the very foundation of his journey as a hero um so they fucked and they already fucked with the with the timeline enough so i don't want the, to see them try to pull something out of their ass and say oh that was another version of the of the Sam Raimi universe. Oh, those stuff did happen, but it's just slightly different this time. And second of all, the I mean, the last thing is that sure, Tobey Maguire still got it in terms of being uh, being able to play as Spider Man, but that's Tobey Maguire. What about Kirsten Dunst? What about uh, everyone else who was in those movies? Are we gonna? Are they gonna be able to have the same? Uh, are able to b play those same characters again? Because again, it's been twenty fucking years since those movies came out. So God knows if any of them are still available or are still interested in being a part of this universe again. Again, we were lucky enough to get the likes of like J uh, J.K. Simmons and Tommy McGuire, but. I really don't know if everyone else is going to be up to par for 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 a return. And I guess I lastly, I think if you ever want to see a version of that akin to Tommy Maguire, Spider Verse is your is our is your next best thing because I feel like they took a lot of cues from Tommy Maguire Spider Man in for their portrayal of of like pseudo six one six Spider Man. So, if you want to know what happens to Tommy Maguire Spider Man, this is sort of like like an approximation slash homage to that version of Spidey. Hmm. That's fair. So yeah, not a fan of of, of Spider Man Four. Uh, it's all it's all it's it, it's we've well uh, in my opinion we are well past the point of ever having uh, that. Uh, that dream movie. I, I, I've I've moved on since then. As much as I would have loved to have had Spider-Man uh, four back in 2012 instead of the Amazing Spider-Man, I've I've come to terms with the fact that we may never get that movie, and I've long since been ready to move on and embrace new things going forward. All right. Which is what I got in Spider-Verse, and honestly, I want to have more of that shit. Fair enough. Roman Reigns unifies the WWE and Universal Championships by beating Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 38. Yeah. Reigns yeah. defeated Brock at WrestleMania on Sunday night, unifying the WWE and Universal Championships in the process. The Tribal Chief finally picked up his first win over the Beast at a WrestleMania event by countering Lesnar's F5 attempt at an F5 and nailing him with yet another spear. Reigns has now successfully retained Universal title at back-to-back -back WrestleManias, the first man ever to do so as part of his record-breaking championship reign, and he, as such, He's actually broken Brock's record for the, the time, length of time he's held the Universal Belt in one single reign. Reigns was recently a guest on the Michael K show in which he drew a comparison to Michael Jordan in how he finds motivation. Okay, uh, I don't know if I would compare his royal airness with, <coughs> with Roman Reigns. That's, that's just me. His rivalry with Lesnar stretches all the way back to 2015, and while they've shared the ring 11 times, Reigns now has a 3-2 record in a singles match against the Beast. Oh, of course, I absolutely respect him, but in that sense, when it goes to 1v1, hand on hand, you've got to have some hate, whether it's to the core or you have to, you know. Like Michael Jordan, I like to have 
I like to personally motivate myself and grasp on anything I can take to my take myself to that main event energy to that main event level to that championship defense mode god mode if you will so it's going to be a lot of respect for many different reasons who he is as a performer as an athlete the history that we have the way it's affected me in my career the way it's changed my mindset the things that I've learned the things that I've done wrong and how I've corrected those things there's so many things great to be grateful for within my interactions with Brock, especially this one that's coming up at WrestleMania when I beat them, and I solidify this run as the greatest Universal Champion of all time. And of course, the results from WrestleMania that night, the Usos defeated Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick, Bo and Rick Boogs for the tag team titles. Yep. Drew McIntyre... First things first. Yeah. Uh, safe recovery for Rick Boogs because he, fu he fucking ripped. Fuck, fuck, fuck I did. Fuck I did see something match. about that. Uh, Drew McIntyre gets Happy Corbin. It, it's so sad the way Drew has fallen down the card in the last year and a half, mm -hmm. considering he was the WWE champion during, you know, the first pandemic. The Miz and Logan Paul defeat the Mysterials. <laughs> oh. Uh, 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 I think I just threw up in my move mouth. On, move on, uh, please, move on, move on, oh lord. Bianca Belair gets her redemption against Becky Lynch. Good on to Heard you, that girl. was match of the night. Yeah, that was match of the night. <laughs> also, Bianca, how you doing? <laughs> Cody Rose defeats Seth Rollins. We kind of figured it would be Cody. And apparently one of the new rules, one of the rules about his new contract there's no mention of Stardust. Ever. And to that I say, good. Smackdown Women's Championship, Charlotte Fred defeats defeats Ronda Rousey. Boo. Yeah. yeah. Her, that end, her, her the ending suck. It did. Steve Austin in his first WrestleMania match in 19 years defeats Kevin Owens. Despite the fact that was his first match in two decades, he did all right. <laughs> RK Bro defeats the Street Profits in the Alpha Academy. Buffy, Bobby Lashley. I heard that match. I heard that match was. I heard that, oh, sorry about that, but I heard that match was really good, actually. So did I. So did yeah. I heard that was decent, too. Bobby Lashley defeats Omos. Johnny mm -hmm. Knoxville defeats Sami Zayn. I'm still trying to get my head around that one. That match was hilarious. I'm sorry. I, uh, I know uh, a lot of I, people I, hated I, that, but that movie was, that was funny. I saw photos of that. I saw photos of that. I, 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 I thought that was fun as hell. We men suplex Sami Zayn. <laughs> Why? The women's tag team championship, Sasha Banks and Naomi, who I'm calling the glowing bosses, defeats Queen Zelina and Carmella, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, and Natalia and Shayna Baszler. Edge defeats AJ Styles. Pat McAfee defeats Austin Theory. Heard that was a really good match. Mm -hmm. And Vince McMahon makes his first WrestleMania appearance since WrestleMania 26, and I'll give the man this. Considering he's 77 this August, he has a physique that most people his age could only dream about, but I'ma say this, Vince. I have seen awful stunners down the years. That one ranks up with the worst of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was sloppy as hell. That was worse than the one he took from Austin at Madison Square Garden in August of '97. Because oh my god, I've seen some nasty yeah, ones. Yeah, that was bad. <sighs> Crying out loud, the Ugh. Rock has sold better, worse ones than that. Even even Shano has sold ones where he literally bounces across the ring. What? Oh. It's one of those you have to sort he, he sold one stunner where he literally almost looked like he was caught in mid-flight. It's the only way I could describe it. That and those that remember the third stunner that Scott Hall took at WrestleMania 18 where he literally looked like he was going into war bit. Whee! <laughs> And, and that Sounds match... like he was bouncy, bouncier than Tigger. Maybe he was. Maybe he was an animal in a previous life. Who can say? 
But it didn't help matters that uh, Scott was hung over from the night before and you sort of think... Oh, no. Um, and last but never least, uh, Roman Reigns defeats Brock Lesnar, which means Roman is the undisputed champion, so he can now go on both shows and he's at and he's instructing the bloodline to go after RK Bro for the Raw tag titles. So either we're seeing a temporary unification of titles again or we're seeing the end of the brand extension. And if that's the case, yay. Cause you've got TNA. You've got ROH that's on sabbatical because I think Tony Khan has bolt our yeah, it's a, yeah, it actually came, yeah, it actually came back via um, Super Carter Honor. And I think he's actually running it as a separate company. So you've now got AEW, Impact Wrestling, ROH, and WWE. You have four wrestling, major wrestling promotions. There is no point in having the brand extension anymore. And you could make the argument they didn't really need to bring it back the second time because I noticed whenever they end the brand splits, they don't end them for long. Because when they <clears throat> ended it in 2011, you still had the WWE and the World Heavyweight belts, you know, existing separately until they unify them in 2013. But then three years down the line, we get the Universal belt and... That belt's been nothing but a disappointment. Because it's nothing more than a recolor of the WWE title. And it's the same thing with the Raw and SmackDown tag team titles along with the respective women's belts. I preferred it when, you know, during the original brand split, you had the World Tag Team titles and the WWE Tag Team titles, the Women's Championship and the Divas title, and then WWE and the World Heavyweight belt. At least there was distinction between the two i mean thankfully they haven't done this to the united states and the intercontinental championships but imagine if you had like the raw middleweight belt and the smackdown middleweight belt you'd look and think okay stop just <laughs> no desist so if they are reunifying them great and they can just Take away the red and blue leather uh, for the tag titles and just reunify them to where it's black leather again. Because I think when, particularly with belts, if you have the leather as black, you keep it simple and you keep it dignified. Because it goes with anything. Whereas what they've done with the universal belt, when it was just like what some people refer to as the big red jam belt, it that you heard the reveal that you know, the reaction the fans gave when they revealed it at SummerSlam 2016. They're like, this is ugly. It's like, crying out loud. I think people would have rather seen seen a spinner belt return than see that. But, it is what it is. Um, <sighs> Raiden, what do you make of the fact that we've now got one world champion, and the fact that Roman Reigns was comparing himself to Jordan. Uh, I, I, honestly, I don't think it's on him. I think it's just what what what, what the company will say. Like, I think he's, he's supposed to say stuff like that. That's that's the world, cha world champion. You know what I mean? So it is. So it is what it is with that one. So yeah, it's not it's not on him on that because of that world champion. Oh God, listen. I love what they're doing with Roman as a heel. It's great, but it's just the same shit every single day. Acknowledge me. Acknowledge it's the same. It, that's that's what, that's what I'm hearing. But he's gonna, they're gonna probably keep the belt on him until The Rock comes back. That's the way. That's 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 what that's that's how it is. I'm sorry. So every time year, I hear sorry. Uh, every time I hear acknowledge me, it's like notice me. No, no, she's the senpai! <laughs> <laughs> Basically. But yeah, it's like... I think he will lose the WWE, the WWE title and he will still keep the Universal title, but... 
And that's just me. It's just gonna be the same old, same old stuff with them, so, eh, whatever. Mm. Alrighty. Um, Madam President, same questions to you. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't, uh, the fact that he compared himself to Jordan, I'm like, oh, that's cute. No, no, just no. But that's just me. And the fact that they're building this whole thing with the, with the bloodline taking all the belts, I'm like, oh, God, can we just shut the fuck up about this bloodline bullshit? And the fact that, like, Shinsuke Nakamura came out, you could have built him up. No, you had to super kick him in the face and just, like, knock him off his perch before he even got on the damn thing to begin with. Again, who's gonna beat Roman? Because I don't- I just don't see anything happening. It's really making my fucking head hurt sometimes. Ah. Okay, um, look, I'm sorry. Uh, he's been a- he was a good heel for, like, the first month- a few months where that he had the belt. But- he, it's been a year. Can we get the damn belt off Roman for, like, more than one title reign before he gets it back again, please? Or make a caveat that he can never run for the belt ever again? But, oh no, they can't do that because they have to freaking do everything because WWE likes to kick you in the dick. I'll say this much. Mm -hmm. We have had the belt for six months shy of two years. But at least with him as champion, he's actually there, unlike Brock was in his last couple of reigns. Good point. But, again, I, I don't see the point of long-ass title reigns. It's like, to what, to fill your record books? But, because, again, this would have worked like back in the territory days, but it doesn't work anymore. You can't have somebody hold the belt for that long without building up some competition. Yeah, you want to be frank. This is com like uh, if he wants a real comparison, you're fucking Hulk Hogan holding onto the fucking belt and not letting go. Ugh. Except Roman yeah. Reigns doesn't go out making sex tapes. <laughs> no. Please no. no. Please Ugh. no. Yeah, no. But just, uh, oh god, I'm just like it's time to stop. And can we just end his reign already? And then he never goes after the belt ever again because. You're set for life. You don't need to do this anymore. You can stop now. It's time to stop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Do it. <laughs> we'll go on to another topic because neither Steve nor Kaiju care for wrestling. So, yeah. Um, Come on. <laughs> Okie dokie. We have our first pictures of the Giganotosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. And he's Ooh. a big fella! He's a big boy! <laughs> bigger. Why do they always go bigger? <laughs> the Giganotosaurus is coming to the Jurassic World franchise described as bigger, scarier, and with more teeth. Jurassic World Dominion is bringing something old, something new, something feathered, and something blue to the party this year with the return of some old dinosaurs and introductions to new ones in the epic conclusion to the Jurassic World trilogy. While the trailer has shown the long-awaited return of the Dilophosaurus, thank goodness for that, been too long. And little thing. I, I do wonder if the Dilophosaurus will... I, I do wonder... If we'll finally get a full adult-sized Dilophosaurus, which, yeah. for whatever reason, we've never... Those are some big motherfuckers, okay? And yet, yeah. we anytime they appear in the franchise, they're always, like, dwarfs or, or babe juveniles. I don't know what the hell is going on there. They did the same thing in the fourth season of um, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Seriously? They yeah, they, they, they're still, like... Uh, mid torso height. That's Why stupid. Um, I was about to say, if you pay attention at the very beginning of Fallen Kingdom, when the technician is working around the circuit board to get the sea door open for that little submersible to come in, if you pay attention to the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you see the foliage um, ruffle, and you hear the faint sound of a Dilophosaur hoot 
for like a second. That was its mm -hmm. only involvement in Fallen Kingdom. Because it was, mm. in the original script, it was supposed to have a slightly bigger presence, but nope, they just cut it down to that, and I'm just like, yeah, bleh. Mm -hmm. While the trailer has shown a long awaited return of Dilophosaurus from the original Jurassic Park, Blue the Velociraptor, and some scientifically accurate feathered dinosaurs, Empire Magazine have revealed a first look at the Giganotosaurus, the Giga for short, which director Colin Trevorrow has likened to Batman's Joker. Oh, really? The, the oh, theme. no. Even, even, because of even, this. Though the, even though these two dinosaurs have never appeared together in the same continent nor the same time period. Yep. So fuck oh. you, Colin Trevorrow. <laughs> so, well, as I said before, Kaiju, Hollywood doesn't like accuracy so much. Mm hmm. Accuracy? What's that? <laughs> While everyone's favorite T-Rex will be making an appearance in the newest addition to the Jurassic Park World movies, in what is promising to be a colossal movie is bringing something bigger and badder to screens in the form of the Giga, a dinosaur that is larger and more ferocious than even the genetically modified Indominus Rex and Indoraptor that have previously served as antagonists in the series. However, unlike those fictional dinosaurs, the Giga did actually exist as a behemoth of the late Cretaceous period and will certainly have the humans of the movie running for their lives. Trevorrow has hinted that the Giga is not a nice dinosaur. Aha. Uh -huh. By any stretch of the imagination, and while Rexy has often found herself becoming the hero of the hour, there is nothing like that going to happen with the new King of the Dinosaurs. I wanted something that felt like the Joker. I'm, I'm uh, just I'm just imagining the Giga going to Rex goes, tell me, have you ever danced with the devil in the pale of moonlight? I'm or, just I'm just waiting for him to say, you want to know how I got these scars? I was waiting for that. <laughs> now I'm just imagining the Giga, white makeup, green spikes, and the red ruby lips to to match it. Ew, Betsy. Oh, wait, wrong franchise. Ew, what am I doing? And Rex is like raising an eyebrow thinking, did I sign up for this? I wanted something that felt like the Joker. It just wants to watch the world burn. An exclusive image from the latest issue of Empire, Giga can be seen terrorizing both old and new stars of the franchise in a moment that is reminiscent of the Alan Grant and Ian Malcolm's first encounter with Rexy way back in 1993. This asks the question, where has the Giganotosaurus been all this time? While the genetically engineered Indominus Rex was given a clear story, there are plenty of questions around while where something like the Giga would have been kept all these years to have not previously featured in the Jurassic Park franchise. Javaro teased some plot of the movie which explained a little about where the Giga comes from in the new movie. Biosyn got the contract to house the dinosaurs that are being captured around the world via various governments. They claim it's a research facility where they can study the pharmaceutical values of these animals, but there's other stuff going on. Of course there is. Of course, mm -hmm. long-term fans of the franchise will be more than aware that Biosyn was in Jen's rival in the original Jurassic Park, and the company Dennis Nedry was attempting to steal embryos for when he caused chaos. Ironically, not by Malcolm, and his own death at the original park. As we know that Nedry's contact, Dodson, will also feature in the movie, it looks like Dominion is about to tie up everything, from Jurassic Park through to Fallen Kingdom in a movie that Trevorrow has admitted he's been waiting to do this whole time. <sighs> okay. Mm. There is a lot to unpack from this. Uh, well, let's see. Hopefully, shut up, phone. Hopefully, hmm. the movie will be able to give us much more context to the origin of the Giga as to how scientifically accurate uh, this particular dinosaur would be because I think there's only been like limited uh, specimens ever found throughout time. Mm. That remains to be seen. Uh, 
When I hear pharmaceutical values, I just roll my eyes and think, yeah, great, we're doing scientific, you know, you know, testing on animals again. It's like, yeah, great, like we haven't seen that before. Um, Trevorrow had said for the longest amount of time that this movie is going to be like more like the original Jurassic Park. Now, Jurassic Park, on its own merits and values, and I've said this time and time before, if you were to release that, if, you, if the movie was never released in 93, and somebody went into the vault, and, you know, uh, you know, dusted it off, did a digital restoration, brought it up to HD, and put it out brand new this year, that movie will rake in a billion. Without question. Because of the way that movie was written, they they were trying to discuss they were trying to learn how to do a movie like that. But the moment you put an original one out and then you announce that you, you're doing a sequel, they have an idea of what's you know, of how some plot points will go or what some specific tropes or routines will be used. I mean, the Back to the Future trilogy is a prime example because when they went from part one to part two, you see similar beats being repeated, but <clears throat> as we've come to find out through watching that trilogy over the last 36, you know, thir near 37 years, you kind of expect it because it's just part of the nature of the story. But where's Jurassic Park is probably the one movie in the entire series that feels like the most definitive Jurassic Park movie, whereas the rest, they tend to fall short of the mark. Whereas, and this is something Raiden and I argue to this day, Lost World comes in a very close second. It's, it's not as good as the original, but it also tried to do its own thing but it just falls a little short of the mark, whereas Jurassic Park 3 we all consider bottom tier production, which is what Madam President referred to uh, when we did the uh, commenta commentary for the 20th anniversary review for the third movie. Jurassic World I'm, I'm mixed on. I There are bits that I enjoy, but there are some bits where I feel like this is repeating tropes from the first movie, whereas Fallen Kingdom... Uh, I'm kind of 50-50 with because they're, they do some things with it that I like, but there are other aspects where it just takes a nosedive off the cliff, literally and figuratively, and not just that scene when the volcano explodes. So, to try and make uh, a survival horror-style thriller like the first movie was... From what I've been hearing, he has paid real close attention to the original book to try and get inside of what Michael Crichton was trying to do with that first book. Because there are scenes in the book that were never fully adapted into the original movie, like the death of the human infant because of those damn compies in Costa Rica. I mean... Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You would have to heavily water that scene down because I've noticed since the first movie, they've never put children um, characters in the same type of harm's way like they did with Lex and Tim from the first movie. You see little maybe glimpses or attempts to try and match that in Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom, but it's never done into the point where the T-Rex could have killed them. Um, so I don't know. I mean, without Jurassic World Dominion crossing that line into going to, say, Rated R, you know, and crossing into Roger Corman territory, I don't know. But Trevorrow says this is the movie he wanted to make and have it be more like the original. So I'd say 
talk is cheap and also money talks and bullshit walks so you've met you put that statement out there june 10 in two months we will find out if the proof in the pudding is in the eating because i've been a little bit skeptical as to how they could finish this but i started with the original jurassic park and i'll end it with dominion but He's literally got to back his words up now. Because... It's as I said... People are 50-50 with Jurassic World. People didn't really like what they did with Fallen Kingdom. So this is the one where... Put up or shut up. But... People did actually like the directing that uh, J.A. Biona did with Fallen Kingdom. Because he got... You know, he got more than decent performances out of his actors. Whereas when I mentioned to Kaiju that Colin was going to be directing the third, he's like, oh, so we're going back to average. Whereas J.A. brought something fresh to the table. We're going back to, uh, you know, like mid-tier. So, I don't know. I'm personally glad to see the likes of the original Jurassic Park trio returning because this will be Sam Neill's first appearance in the franchise in 22 years. And once again, we find him coming back where it's the third in a trilogy. And it's as we've stated so many times, he was one of the very few saving graces of Jurassic Park 3. Whereas, well, we know some actors weren't up to par. <coughs> Tia Leone! Uh, <laughs> so, I'll be interested to see what Laura Dern brings. Because she's a very different actress compared to how she was... In one and three, uh, Jeff Goldblum. This will be only only be his fourth appearance, even though his coffee break appearance in Fallen Kingdom was at the beginning and end. But he added that necessary uh, moral conscience, for want of a better description. So. I'd be interested, like I say, to see the scientific accuracy, how the original trio uh, are brought into this, how they fare, and what this will mean going forward, because Frank Marshall has emphatically said there will be more movies in the future, because if it makes money, they'll keep making them. But, um, again, to say that this is going to be like the very first movie... It's one thing to say it, it's another to actually do it. And I think I've said more than enough regarding this, so... Madam President, what do you make of it all and the fact that the Giga looks particularly uh, intimidating? I, I mean, yeah, to be fair, it's like it's very intimidating. Again, I feel nowadays that they're just trying to freaking build up Rexy, just like a little, like, take him down. Let's make him bigger than Rexy. Let's make him bigger. I'm like, I don't need to keep building the the dinosaur up bigger. How, here's the thought. Maybe build something a little bit smaller. Just something that's like, not like gonna t be a big fight or anything like that. Something that's as intimidating as the freaking raptors because you remember jurassic part one how intimidating the raptors were oh yes mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. why not build something that's like that it doesn't have to be bigger like it could be regular size it doesn't have to be bigger i just i don't understand i get the whole phrase bigger is better but it's just try something different try something new try something that's like never been done before just just a thought but guess they won't do that they just want to keep making them bigger and just to the point where we do have actual actual fucking kaijus that are touring a towering like skyscraper sized dinosaurs i'm like yeah we we kind of have those those are they're they're I basic yeah basically yeah i don't understand why it just does it, 
It's it, it's a cool looking dinosaur. I'm not gonna be against that. It's just do we really need to make them bigger? It's just try something a little different. And just that's just me, but it, it does look cool. I, that's all I'll admit. But again, you don't have to go with the phrase "bigger is better." Also, this has just sort of come to my come to my mind when you you know you talk about the uh, thrilling aspects of the first movie. What if you could take, say, the plot synopsis of Dog Soldiers, but replace werewolves with velociraptors? Ooh, uh, that's terrifying. Exactly. Obviously, not people turning into. Uh, Velociraptor. Oh god! There's already no. a movie out there called the Velocipaster. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> it, it's, it looks like it's one of those. It's so bad, it's going to make Raiden laugh like Billy from Double Toasted for about three days straight. <laughs> it's <sighs> the weirdest thing is it's a guy with a curse. That turns into a really bad uh, animatronic uh, dinosaur, but he gets told to actually fight the good fight, courtesy of a prostitute. And I'm like, aha, okay then. And then I look, oh, oh, God, it's, by it, the, it, oh it's by the asylum. Never mind. That makes sense. <laughs> Well, it could be worse. It could be that movie that starred Denise Richards and Paul Walker in... I can't remember what the movie's called. Uh, Annie and the like, T-Rex? Yes, Tammy and the T-Rex. Tammy and the T-Rex, yeah. I'm like, oh, God. The only reason I know about that is because the kill count did a kill count of that movie. I'm like, yeah. oh, God. This movie's a thing. Oh, God. It's now a thing on Blu-ray also. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's sad. Okay. Um, Raiden, what do you make of it? I can't lie to you. I like the whole look of of of, of the of the head with the big ass jaws and everything. But I don't know, man. It's just just watching uh just, just both Jurassic World movies. Like, how many times are you gonna make another? I mean, I know the Gigasaurus that has, 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 has existed, but I don't know. I don't know. It's just the last the Fallen Kingdom really rubbed me the wrong way, especially with the Dominus Rex. And uh, it's, it's, it's just too much to bear, but I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it, looks, it, does look, it, does, it does look cool, cool though, but I think it's cool. I, I just think I don't know what they're going to do, do with him do in the first place, even though I'm half, half and half interested. Yeah, they're saying it's like it's got many rows of teeth. How many do you need? And did you crossbreed that with a shark? Because they have rows of teeth. Nah, Lids, if they wanted something with shark teeth, they would have gone with Carcharodontosaurus. Its name yes. literally means yeah. shark tooth lizard. And also, That's fair. and also, for, for whatever reason, they've always tried to go with a super dinosaur. Since Jurassic yeah, that's Park my problem. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, it always goes. It always starts with Jurassic Park three. It always goes back to the Spino. Uh... <laughs> at least with this one, at least this one's not a hybrid. Cause... Oh, God. True. Because they they said after Fallen Kingdom they were done with hybrids, and I was like, oh, thank gosh for that. Because with the Irex. I kind of got it with the idea of like, okay, your T-Rex is your base, you have a Velociraptor mixed in with it so it's got intelligence and able to coordinate attack patterns, but then you start hearing about cuttlefish and Amazonian Snake. tree frogs, and, Snake. and it's when you get to the Indoraptor where you say, oh, it's 50% Velociraptor and 50% Indominus, so it's like, so it's 75% Raptor. Because they, they overlook things like that. If they had said we had taken, say, 50% of the IRX, but mixed it in with, say, an Allosaurus and a Deinoticus, and I'd say, okay, 
you're mixing in other decent, deadly um, carnivorous DNA, but to go and say it's 50 this and 50 that when the latter was already 25% Velociraptor, it's like, what? And let's not even talk about the the Looney Tunes grin that thing sported. Oh, God. Oh. I mean, I, I remember Kaiju's words were, oh, that that's not right. It doesn't do that. Well, shit. Hmm. I told my brother <laughs> about this. Like, oh, he's making it up. He sees it's like, that thing looks horrible. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> so... I'm hoping we don't see any of that nonsense in there, because if we see the Giga or Rexy do something weird, like say a rock eyebrow, I'd be like, okay. No, if it's if it's puts on a top hat and starts doing "Hello, my baby," <laughs> I'll be like, okay, I'm I'm leaving, I'm leaving now. <laughs> I'll be like Mark Hamill from. Uh, you know, Robot Chicken. Look, if you're not gonna take this seriously, then I'm out. <laughs> so yeah. Um. So Stephen, thoughts? What? The question is, um, some of the other plot elements that we saw a couple of few years ago, like um, Doctor Wu doing his experiments with the Triassic creatures, the Lystrosaurus. I wonder how that's going to be fitting in with the story as well. From what Will I that remember be... reading, he's breeding those specifically to make pets out of them. Oh no, that's yeah. a freaking lawsuit waiting to happen. That's not going to end terribly. <laughs> the thing is, we're considering what they're doing with the Gega, it's like, um, I can understand from, a ho from the Hollywood perspective, because... Accuracy doesn't always equal spectacle, and Hollywood is always known for going for spectacle. Mm -hmm. It's just whether it pays off for them this time around, especially seeing as oh, a whole lot is riding on this movie now. Well, they've had to delay the release date uh, once already, because uh, it was meant to come out... Um, June time last year because it would have been on the original date uh, it would come out on the date the original movie would have come out which was June 11 but mm -hmm. by delaying it a year they're putting it on June 10 which is one day shy of the 29th anniversary and some have argued why didn't they just wait until the 30th anniversary of the original but then that's delaying it by you know, another two years, so I think... Universal... And then people... And people would already be starting to lose interest. Yeah. And Universal have, you know, have already had to, like I say, delay this once, so I don't know how much money that's cost them insurance for having the movie on hold, because you know, they have to make movies by a set point, otherwise they, they don't get their investment back. Um... Mm -hmm. So yeah, the interesting to see how this goes. Also considering this was the first movie to get back into production during the first pandemic. They were the ones to get the go-ahead from the UK government and from Universal respected to say, okay, we know how to handle this. We know how to keep everyone safe. Let's get back, let's get back to work. Considering the majority of this movie was actually shot in the UK. Mm hmm. I know that uh, Chris Pratt actually objected to flying out to certain scenes where there was an outbreak at one, at one stage because I think they were having to go over to Malta. And he says, hang on a minute, if there's an outbreak there, should we really be making these unnecessary trips when. You know, we could just wait, say, a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, he's not the one who signs off on everything. I do respect one thing uh, for Chris, is that he wouldn't come over until his wife had uh, given birth to their latest child at the time, which I thought, no, I like that. He's putting family first, and that's how it should be. And, of course, 
as most people know, he is actually um, he is actually a devoutee Christian, which is kind of weird when you consider some of the characters he plays, considering the jock he plays in the MCU when he makes the remark saying you should see where the black light comes or it would look like a Jackson, you know, uh, Pollock painter, which I'm like, <laughs> yeah, nice, Star-Lord, nice. <laughs> and it kind of reminds me of some of the stuff that Charlie Harper got up to on Two and a Half Men, which, by the way, he's ranting about getting that series rebooted. I'm like, dude, you can't make Two and a Half Men today. Not the way you originally no. made it. No. I mean, crying out loud, they wouldn't be able to make friends the way they did um, nearly 30 years ago. Because time has moved on since then. I think there are some things that some people need to calm down about, but when you look at some dated jokes like, for example, in some episodes of Bottom, the way that uh, the character of Richard Richard would describe um, describe uh, French people as a specific animal. You'd think, you can't say that today, dude. It's just that, uh, mm -mm. no. Uh -uh. Or, there's one episode where they're, uh, they're going for this pub quiz and Richard asks for absinthe, which is like a <gasps> specific... Uh, like posh sophisticated drink and the landlord Dick Head I'm not making it up that is his character name uh, oh, geez, Louise. he says and I quote there's a gay pub up the road I'm like you can't say that now Ooh, you oh, can't no. say that now uh -uh. but uh -uh, it was uh -uh. very early 90s it was a different time Yeah. I, th I mean if they were showing that to today on say UK Gold for example here in the UK they would probably slap a uh, disclaimer. Yeah, saying these have jokes from the early nineties. You might not like that. So if you don't like it, well, we put a disclaimer. Now it's on you. Because if it says if you're good, if you are the easily offended type, don't watch this. Then continue to watch it, and then you're offended. Then who's the bigger idiot? I rest my case. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. We'll just have to see. Um, I know Kaiju's been sat there very, very patiently. Uh, what do you make of what they're doing with regards to uh, the Giga? And how do you think this movie will turn out? How would you prefer this movie to turn out? And how would you not want this movie to turn out? So... What I think they're what they're doing here with the Giga, uh, Giganotosaurus, which funny enough, I've always growing up, I always called it the Giganotosaurus because its name is supposed to mean gigantic southern lizard. So I thought gigantic Giganotto, but I guess I was wrong this whole time. Well, uh, it, 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 all, it all depends on where you come from. Some people say Diplodocus, some people say the Diplodocus. It just, it just, it's just your preference, really. So, Potatosaurus, Potatosaurus. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so, but yeah, in regards to the Giganotus... Sorry, there I go again, I'm too used to it. In regards to the Giganotosaurus, um, I find it no different than the la what they've been doing for the last three movies. They did the exact same thing, hyping up the Spinosaurus for Jurassic Park 3. They hyped up the Irex for the... For Jurassic World, and they hyped up the Indoraptor for Jurassic uh, Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. So what they're doing here is the same shit, just packaged slightly differently. Um, where it's like, oh, here's a new big bad dino that's going to be the the big thing we're going to be hyping up, so that you can buy the toys and come to the, see the movie, so you can see it in, in on the big screen. Um, it's nothing new, really. Nothing all that impressive in my eyes. It, if anything, I would have preferred rather than just making, rather than like making a new dinosaur for T Rex to eventually fight and see die by the end of the movie. I would have loved if we got something akin to like instead of a big scary dinosaur 
because dinosaurs are already big and scary, so making one that's even bigger and scarier is kind of redundant. What if you introduced a quote-unquote good guy dinosaur? Now, they, you could argue that blue is supposed to be that, but again, it's a velociraptor. We've seen those things, stupid, those, we've seen those things since the first movie. So what if we got, like, an actual peaceful dinosaur that properly reflects the uh, more... Not friendly, but the uh, like the more the more uh, friendlier. I guess yeah, friendlier aspects of dinosaurs because these are not just bloodthirsty killing machines like the these recent movies like to portray. These are living, breathing animals. Of course, they're wild. They're still dangerous. But it'd be great to see a a di like the perfect dinosaur to do this would probably be the Therizinosaurus, my all time favorite dinosaur, which I'm glad it's going to get the chance to shine in this movie i would prefer they hyped up that dinosaur over the giganotosaurus just because of how how bizarre and unique that creature looks it would have been cool because given that in real life this dinosaur was actually a very peaceful uh plant eater it'd be interesting for to have a movie where let's say the the human protagonists bond with a dinosaur and then maybe this dinosaur follows them on an adventure and helps them out in certain cases um, because again, everything that I've seen in this movie so far just feels like been there, done that. Only they try to amp up the uh, the stakes by going global this time around, as opposed to being confined to an island. Which, sure, that does kind of sound interesting, but I have literally no faith in that this is going to turn out to be any better than the last two movies. And nothing that I've seen here in this article has proven otherwise. Yeah. Be uh, simply because I do not trust modern Hollywood, and I certainly do not trust the people behind these Jurassic World movies to provide a smart uh, action sci-fi thriller on the level of the first movie or even the Michael Crichton novels. Uh, I, again, I love the premise of dinosaurs being set loose upon the world but with these people behind the movie i do not at all like i've given them the benefit of the doubt twice already you know it's the whole idea of you know fool me one shame on me fool me twice shame on, no fool me one shame on you fool me twice shame on <laughs> three no, no no better yet to, to quote john tron fool me once uh, shame on you fool me twice how could you fool me three times you officially become that guy <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! I ain't having that shit! <laughs> <laughs> so no, I do not trust these people at all whatsoever in providing uh, an engaging movie that goes beyond dinosaurs go roar and stompy stompy smashy smashy. Hmm. Ooh, speaking of which, they... Uh, showed off some new pictures from some of the Lego sets, including the Giganotta and the Therizinosaurus in Lego form. Cool. Ah, Lego. Legos are nice. Oh, wow. The one good thing to come out... Yeah, that's the one good thing that come out of this This more most likely to be stupid movie is the fact that they get my boy the Therizinosaurus in the spotlight. <laughs> and for anyone who doesn't know the Therizinosaurus... I highly recommend this uh, mini documentary from the Walking with Dinosaurs uh, team uh, called The Giant Claw. Chased by Dinosaurs, featuring Nigel yeah. Marvin. Yes, it, Chased by Dinosaurs was a two-part special, one focusing on the Giganotosaurus and the Argentinosaurus, and the second one being about the Therizinosaurus. I believe it was The Giant Claw and Land of Giants. Yes, that was that was what both uh, specials were called. So mm -hmm. yeah, do check out those uh, chased by dinosaurs. Yeah, I'm especially just... pri prior, especially prior to uh, going into this move, uh, this movie. Don't get chased by dinosaurs. That would not be good. No. What were you gonna say, MJ? I'm just looking at the scale that you've got with. Um with the Dilophosaurus that was featured in the original movie and how <laughs> they actually compare up in real life. Mm -hmm. He's a big fella. Yep. 
and they, well, they keep screwing they keep screwing him over in these in these movies. Well, size accuracy with dinosaur sizes is not exactly the forte of the franchise. I mean, the Velociraptors are way bigger than what they should be. Very true. Yeah, they just like the name. They want. They essentially took a Deinonychus and slapped on the Velociraptor name simply because Velociraptor sounded cooler from a marketing mm -hmm. standpoint. They took the coolest body with the coolest name and combined them. And they do Where actually is... admit in the background information for Velociraptors on Jurassic World Evolution that the Velociraptor genome is actually genetically engineered to be a lot larger than the original specimen that was found. So they do actually admit they're bigger you than what small, they're supposed you, you to mean, be. You, you mean smaller? They were genetically engineered to be smaller than what was originally found? You said larger. Yeah. But I think you mean smaller. Yeah. Um, so they do actually, like I say, they do admit that they've genetically altered it because we know velociraptors in the fossil record are oh no no are you referring to the velociraptor or the yes. dilophosaurus velociraptor oh okay okay uh because velociraptors in the fossil record are no bigger than that of a chicken um or turkey yeah so they only put it up to the height of dinoticus or maybe a little bit of Utah Raptor because you have Velociraptor at the size of a chicken. The audience member is not going to be really that intimidated, but when you have something that's human height, it's like, oh, something that's super intelligent and has the pace of a cheetah with those sickle claws on the middle toe. Um... That's going to intimidate people, you know, and as we keep coming back to how they were portrayed uh, in the very first movie, um, they are not to be messed with. And I don't think they've necessarily been defanged, uh, particularly when we went into the Jurassic World trilogy, but it felt like there was like um, an evolution and relationship forming between man and raptor because obviously owen's the first guy to actually be able to give these animals commands more so with blue because she's a little bit more compliant and recept and receptive and i'll be interested in hearing the explanation of how blue has been able to reproduce for this third movie because she is supposed to be the last of her kind, yet uh, they're going to ignore the legions of Velociraptors that were breeding on Isla Sorda in Jurassic Park 3, and it's theorized, theorized, mind you, by the time we jumped from Jurassic Park 3 to Fallen Kingdom, um, there should have been at least about a thousand to maybe two thousand raptors on that island. If they continued reproducing like jackrabbits. But I don't know. There's so many unanswered questions between the first and second trilogy because where is the Tyrannosaur family? Where is the Spinosaurus? Because the Spino was supposed to show up in Fallen Kingdom as a rematch bet between. Between him and the Rex, even though the Rex he took down in the third movie was not Rexy, and they said it was just like a a sub adult. So oh, so it's the little T Rex from the second. Like nope, not a Tyrannosaur. Because keep in mind, um, Isla Sorna is supposed to be something like five times larger than Isla Nublar. So I don't know, but they said that all the animals from Site B were shipped off to. Isla Nublar, and I'm like, yeah, well, where's most of the dinos from those two movies? It's like, I'm, I'm sorry, movie, but that's a huge gaping plot hole that you're leaving open for everyone to take it apart with. So big a brachiosaur could walk through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now there's some 
speculation going around that uh, the Brachiosaurus that perished at the base of the volcano in Fallen Kingdom is now not the Brachiosaurus that we saw in the very first movie and that somehow she got off the island. And I'm like, the only ones who were allowed to retcon uh, the way they did was the way Fox did it for X-Men Days of Future Past, only because we wanted to forget about X-Men Last Stand and X-Men Origins Wolverine. I know Raiden doesn't have anything good to say about that one. Mm. And he's gone to sleep again. Not the first time he's done this, but to be fair, mm -hmm. the, to be fair, the man works hard. Yes, he does. All right. On that note, we'll call it time for a week because my voice is struggling to keep it together, and we've kind of gone over time. But you know what? That's okay. And I think, I think as a. Mm. As a rule, do you guys want um, Easter Sunday off? I'm okay with that. Because it's Easter yeah. Sunday in the UK next Sunday, and you know, thankfully, I'm having I'm supposed to be having the night off from work because, well, you know, it's Easter Sunday. Um, yeah. So okay, we won't be back um, for next Sunday, so we won't be back until April 24. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Wow. Sounds like a plan. All right. We'll see you in two weeks. Until next time, I have been the night mm. saying good night from the night. Hey. And don't forget to check out Kaiju Noir's comic, Primal Warrior Draco Azul. Now available, available on Amazon. On. Oh, sorry. Hey, who's, who, whose job is it here to be the shill master? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I do I do appreciate it though. Yes, you can get Primal Warrior Draco Zul issues one, two, and three over on Amazon Kindle Comicsology, as well as my novel length anthology book, Primal Warrior Draco Zul, Full Metal Chronicles. And for all the information you all the latest information on Draco Zul and all my other projects, you can follow me on Twitter at PW underscore Draco Azul on Instagram at Kaiju Noir on YouTube at Kaiju Noir and on Facebook under the Primal Warrior Draco Azul page. And he was also the Cyber Raiden. And, and also, don't forget to subscribe to Oni Rikaku on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Oni Rikaku. <laughs> Give him lots of bits and lots of subscriptions. Yes. And cheesy poofs. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Not cheesy poofs, no. And I no, didn't no, even no. say a word. That's right. <laughs> but someone had to. Yep. Sweet. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care.